Here are 9 tips for landing and surviving the early game in Fortnite, presented by Fortnite Master. In this video, we talk about how to optimize your early game with in-depth explanations on getting the best landing, finding loot, and winning early skirmishes. Without wasting any time, let's get started. First things first, check the map as soon as you enter the lobby. Fortnite will display the battle bus's route on the map which is great for determining your drop location ahead of time. Not only will this diffuse any confusion between party members, it gives you a ton of information about where many players will end up dropping. This leads us to our next tip, choosing the right drop location. It's important to choose a drop location that fits your playstyle, meaning if you don't like fighting under pressure with minimal weapons and resources, then land somewhere more remote, not a central location like Tilted Towers or Salty Springs. Judging by the battle bus's route, you can tell which locations will be the hottest drops every game and whether to target or avoid those. Locations at the very beginning and directly under the bus's route tend to be hot drops. Other locations will almost always be hot drops like Tilted Towers, Retail Row, and Salty Springs. These places are popular because they have a lot of loot and are centrally located on the map, making them close to the battle bus's route almost every time. Unnamed locations are great options for players looking for more laid back drops. These are places like soccer stadium, motel, shipping container yard, and factories. These drops are less popular and have more than enough loot for a couple of people. The random houses and broken buildings around the map are also good places to land if you need to make a quick adjustment from your original landing plan. Although there isn't as much total loot in these places, there will usually be enough for at least one person to feel comfortable in early skirmishes. Once you've chosen a location, it's all about getting there before your opponents. The overall goal is to drop from the bus, glide down at the steepest possible angle, and have your glider auto-deploy over the lowest possible elevation. The first thing to know is when to drop from the bus, which can vary a lot from game to game depending on the bus's route. Ultimately, you're aiming to auto-deploy about 1 to 1.5 map grid squares from your destination. In most games, you'll have to skydive at an angle to meet that sweet spot. If you're aiming to deploy over one of the lowest elevation spots on the map, like the river next to Tilted, you want to aim for about one grid square away from your target. Otherwise, aim to auto-deploy about 1.25 to 1.5 grid squares from your destination, depending on the elevation. Landing at different locations on mountains like Viking Village or the new Haunted Castle is a little different because they're already so high. For these, aim for a spot off the edge of the mountain when gliding. To land at locations that are really far from the bus route, it's all about deploying early and making sure you'll be able to make it all the way there. Another thing to remember is that you want your glider to auto-deploy over the lowest elevation. Your glider automatically deploys when you're a certain distance above the ground, so it's important to keep an eye on the terrain below when gliding. You'll be forced to deploy much higher if you're gliding over a mountain, rather than the lowest valley or river. Things like roads, rivers, and valleys in between hills are best spots to aim for when you're trying to deploy at the lowest possible elevation. Avoid gliding over things like tall trees, hills, and buildings, as they might force you to deploy too high. Looking at your marker on the minimap is a great way to tell your character's exact position in relation to the ground. For locations at the edges of the map like Lazy Links, Snobby Shores, and Risky Reels, the water off the side of the map is the lowest elevation, so aim for that if possible. After you deploy at the lowest elevation, it's time to start scouting your surroundings. Take a look around at the other players gliding towards the same location and note their height and general direction. This information is vital for landing at the best spot and knowing where your immediate threats are. Doing this also allows you to make last second adjustments to your landing spot, which leads us to our next tip. We wouldn't recommend landing at a spot if somebody beats you there. For example, if you're aiming for the roof of a building and see someone landing there first, don't land on that same roof. Chances are you won't get the loot. Instead, try landing on the ground floor or aiming for a different building altogether. Now let's talk a little more about some ways to ensure you find loot after landing. This might sound obvious, but the first step is to know where the loot spawns in general. Most houses have a chest spawn in their roof. They aren't guaranteed to spawn, but it seems like they do most of the time. Audio cues are a great way to determine if a chest is nearby or not. Landing on the ground floor can be just as good because houses have plenty of chances to spawn loot on the ground floor. In fact, you're much more likely to get a shotgun from the floor loot than a chest, as only double barrels and heavies are available in chests. For locations without many traditional houses like areas in the desert biome, there is usually loot that spawns on top of buildings. This makes it pretty easy to spot weapons on the way down and land on one. There are a couple of specific items that you want to find ASAP when looting early game. 
The first is some sort of close range weapon, ideally a shotgun, that can be used in close quarter combat. This way, you can defend yourself while looting. Next, you want to find a medium ranged weapon like an assault rifle. This is essential for taking any fights after the first minute of looting when you're leaving your landing spot. In the early stages of looting, it's also a good idea to start farming wood and furniture or whatever is available so you have a few walls, ramps, or floors at your disposal. And ideally, you want to find shields as well. If there is no immediate threat, finding shields should be a top priority after securing a close and mid-range weapon. Remember to drink shields, especially mini shields, as soon as possible. The only reason to wait is if you have a big shield and there is no immediate threat, meaning you could possibly find minis before the big. If there are people anywhere nearby, we recommend just drinking the big shield right away. Early fights in and around houses can be nerve-wracking, so it's important to take every advantage you can get. First, listen closely. The directional audio in Fortnite isn't the best, but most of the time it's still good enough to get a general sense of your opponent's positioning if they're moving around. One of the most recognizable tip-offs with audio is when an opponent jumps down a level or lands on the ground outside because it makes a distinct sound when they land. It's equally important to take advantage of right angles since Fortnite is a third-person shooter. Using the third-person camera, you can look around right-hand angles without exposing yourself. Right-hand angles are a huge advantage in fights too. If you look at your crosshair, it sits to the right of your character model. So when you peek around right-hand corners, you only have to expose a small portion of your body to shoot. When peeking left-hand corners, you practically have to walk into the open to shoot without hitting the wall. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed, then please hit the subscribe button as well as the bell to stay updated and notified for when we post a new video. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is the Saved One, and we're out. Peace.